All right, so welcome to lesson 12, our last lesson of this chapter, creating charts. Um, so we're going to be building charts, formatting the parts of a chart manually, and modifying a chart, and using quick analysis tools. So firstly, we're going to be building charts. Um, a chart is a graphical representation of numeric data in a worksheet. And this um, table shows you the different kinds of charts and gives you a description as well as the usual data arrangement. Okay, so first we need to open up um, out of our lesson folder, data files, lesson 12. 12th, 4th, Coffee Financial History. And we're going to enable the editing. Alrighty, and then it says that we are going to select B2 through B8. The 2014 data. And we're going to click the Insert tab, and in the Charts group, choose pie button and then click the first 2d pie chart in the drop down menu um, a color coded pie chart with sections identified by number is displayed um, to move let's see move the mouse pointer to the largest slice um, the screen tip shows series 1.1 1 .1 value 2014 39% shown in figure 2-2. This corresponds to the label 2014 rather than the actual data. So we're going to point to the second largest piece and you'll see that the value is 1575 which is the amount for the total. Neither the column label 2014 nor total sales amount should be included as pie slices. So we're going to click the chart's white space, just somewhere in the white area, and we're going to press delete. The chart is now removed from the worksheet. To delete a chart, click in the white space and then press the delete key on your keyboard. If you click on the graphic or another chart element and press delete, only the selected element will be deleted. So next we're going to choose um, B3 through B7 and we're going to click the insert tab this time choosing the pie chart and then we're going to choose the first 2D pie. The correct data is displayed but the chart is difficult to interpret with only numbers to identify the parts of the pie. Alright, um, when you insert a chart into your worksheet, worksheet, the Chart Tools tab, Design and Format, become visible um, because, um, and you must select the Insert tab on the ribbon each time you want to insert a chart. Okay, so you can see the Chart Tools up here. Um, we're going to click in the Chart's white space and we're going to press Delete again because that was difficult to interpret. And um, we're going to now select A2 through um, B7 and we're going to click on the insert tab and we're going to click pie once again um, in the charts group and we're going to choose the first oh whoops hold on hold on here a2 through B7. Okay, now we'll click the part chart there the pie chart and we'll click the first 2D pie. Okay, as illustrated in figure 2-3, the data is clearly identified with a title and label for each corresponding pie chart. So we want to be able to tell what is going on with our pie, so you need to have these labels as well as a title when you make a chart. Um, <clears throat> so it says to move the mouse pointer to the 
to a blank spot within the chart and drag the chart to move it below the data. So I'm going to move it kind of about to there. And it says to click outside of the chart and then click File, Print. Yep. And then notice that the annual sales data disappears. Um, All right, so notice that the annual sales um, data appears with the chart on the page. We're going to press Escape, and then click on the chart and choose File Print. Okay, this time, now only the chart appears on the page. Pre press Escape, um, or actually, let's say, it says Create an Excel Lesson 12 folder. So let's go to Save As. And we need to um, make an Excel Lesson 12 folder. All right, and we're going to click, uh, oops, let's make a new folder. Lesson 12. <clears throat> Double click to open it. We're gonna name this 12 Chart Solution. Okay, on page 220, lesson 12, let's see. Next, we're going to be embedding a chart. Okay, when you select data and create a pie chart, the pie chart is placed on the worksheet. This is referred to as an embedded chart, meaning it is a place on the, on the worksheet rather than on a separate chart sheet, a sheet that contains only a chart. All right, so we're going to click in the white space on the chart to select it. And in the Move Chart dialog box. Oh, sorry, on the Design tab, and then we're going to click the Move Chart button. The dialog box appears, and we're going to click New Sheet, and we're going to type 2014 Pi. To create a name for our chart, then click OK. The chart becomes a separate sheet in the workbook. It says to click on the Sales tab to return to the workbook, and we're going to save it. Pause, leave the workbook open to use in the next exercise. Next, we're going to choose the right chart for your data. So it says to choose A12 through F7. And it says to make sure that you do not include row 8, the total sales row. It is standard practice not to include totals in column and bar charts. In some instances, it may be helpful to add a line with the totals as a separate axis on the right. So we're going to click the Insert tab. And in the Charts group, we're going to um, select Insert, Chart, Column, or Bar Chart. Um, to get the drop down list. And it says to move to each of the options. When you pause on an option, Excel shows a preview of the chart on the worksheet and a description and tips for a selected chart. So as we go through this, it kind of pauses. And you can kind of check it out. Um, it says, as shown in figure 12-4, a screen tip shows that the type of chart is a 3D clustered column chart right here. Um, Excel suggests using this chart type to compare values when the order of categories is not important. All right, so in the drop-down list, we're going to click on this 3D clustered column chart. The chart title illustrates sales for each of the revenue categories for the, for the five year period. The chart tools tab appears. We're going to click anywhere in the blank part of the chart. And we're going to click and drag the chart 
worksheet um, and position it at the far left. So about right there. Um, it says to click outside the column chart to deselect it. Notice that the chart tools tab disappears. Select A2 through F7 again and we're going to click on the insert tab and in the chart groups this time we're going to choose line um, we're in the 2D line group we're going to choose line with markers which is this one right here um, position the line chart next to the column chart about right there maybe all right um, position it so it should look something like what's in the picture which ours does it says to take a minute to study the two charts in the column chart coffee and espresso are by far the largest revenue sources but coffee accessories is catching up Um, on the line chart, notice that coffee and espresso increase over time, but that the coffee accessories is increasing faster. Bakery items are decreasing, and deli sales is a bit up and down. Okay. Um, it says to click the column chart and click the design tab, and we're going to click the move chart button. And in the new um, sheet box, we're going to type column. And then we're going to click OK. All right, click the sales sheet worksheet again. And we're going to click the line chart. And we're going to click move chart again. And in the new sheet box, we're going to type line and then click OK and then we need to save the workbook it says to pause leave the workbook open to use the next exercise alright so using recommended charts we're going to click back on the sales worksheet tab and we're going to select the year labels um, so A2 through F2 Hold down the control key. Oh, let's see. A2, whoops, let's see. A2 through F3. Okay. It's like the year labels and coffee and espresso cells A2 through F3. Okay. And now we're going to click the insert tab. And then we're going to click the recommended charts button. So Excel recommends four chart types and explains when you should use each of the charts underneath the example. Click the other three chart types and read the description. So this is a line chart. It's used to display trends over time. Cluster chart is used to compare values across a few categories. A pie chart is used to show proportions of a whole. And the stacked area is used to display the relationships of parts of whole over time or categories. All right, so it says to click the other three types, and then we're going to click the line chart, and then we're going to click OK. And it says to click the move chart button. And in the new sheet box, we're going to type um, coffee line. And then click OK. Um, it says to click on the sales tab again for step five. Um, we're still on page 223 here. And select A2 through F2. And we're going to hold down the control, and we're going to select A8 through F8. 
you do not have to choose adjacent sales or ranges when creating your data. So you use the control button to do that. And it says on the insert tab to choose recommended charts again. The recommended choices are the same as in step two, but a few. Um, but because the first row includes years and the second row includes values, um, we're going to click OK. And then we're going to click the Move Chart button, and we're going to in the new sheet box type total line and then click OK. Alright and it says to save the workbook we're going to pause and leave the workbook open to use in the next exercise. Alright next we're going to be creating a bar chart. Bar charts are similar to column charts and can be used to illustrate comparisons among individual items. So it tells us to click on the Sales Sheet tab, and we're going to select cells A2 through F7. Um, <clears throat> and then on the Insert tab, click in Charts, and we're going to click on Insert, Column or Bar Charts. And we're going to click on the 3D bar chart right here. It says a screen tip displays the chart name when you hover over the mouse pointer over the subtype options. The data is displayed in a clustered bar chart and the design tab is active on the chart tools tab. It says to drag the clustered chart to the left below the worksheet data and we're going to select A2 through F7 and on the insert tab in the charts group we're going to click on insert column or bar chart and then we're going to choose the 3D stacked bar subtype. Position the stacked bar chart next to the 3D bar graph and your worksheet should look like figure 12-6 which ours does. <clears throat> we're going to click the move button move chart and in the new sheet box we're going to type stacked bar and then click OK. Click the sales sheet and click the clustered bar and then we're going to click on move chart and we're going to call this one clustered bar and then click OK. Save the workbook. Pause and leave the workbook open for the next exercise. Next we're going to be formatting a chart with a quick style or layout. Okay, I know that this is going to be on your um, test. So we're going to click on the 2014 pie chart. If the de design tab is not visible, we're going to make sure we click on the design tab. <clears throat> and then in the chart styles group, um, one should be selected. Each style, click each style until you come up with the style shown in figure 12-9 which I believe is style 9 okay with the labels and percentages shown oh wait gotta try that one again hmm. Um, 
we'll choose this one for now. Um, if we need to add an element, we certainly can. So if we wanted to add the percentage, um, what I did was I clicked on chart, add chart elements, data labels, more data label options, and then I clicked on percentage over here. Okay. So <clears throat> says the cart chart colors are determined by the theme of your worksheet. Click the change colors button. And we're going to choose color three, which is this one. And we're going to save the workbook. Okay. Formatting a chart with a quick layout. So next we're going to click on the column chart. And we're going to make sure we're in design tab. Choose the quick layouts button. And as you move to each of the options, the chart changes to preview what it will look like if you select it. Um, we are going to choose layout 5, which is this one. The data table appears under the chart. The years act as both the x-axis label and the column headers of the data table. Um, you can use the design buttons on the right to add elements if you'd like. Um, but so far these should be the ones that we have selected. Okay, so chart elements button is right here. Alright, formatting the parts of a chart manually. So we're going to be adding and editing text on our chart. Okay, this area right here kind of shows what each of these parts are. We have a chart title. Um, the chart area is the um, entire chart and all of its elements. Sometimes there's a legend. Our legend is over here. We have a data series, which are rows or columns of information. The title. The access. So... Um, there's a vertical axis and a horizontal on the column chart. So it says to get ready use the previous worksheet we're going to click on 2014 pi and we're going to click the 2014 title and it says to move the insertion point to the end of the label and we're going to type space annual sales. Okay, and then it says to select the label text home tab. And click the um, font dialog box launcher. The font dialog box appears and we're going to click the um, all caps to uncheck it and then click OK. Oh, we gotta redo that. Font, all caps, click OK. So I must have been typing with my caps lock on. There we go. <clears throat> and then it says to click on the format tab. And then in the insert shapes group, we're going to click text box, which is right here. And in the lower left corner of the chart area, we're going to type your initials in today's date. So lower left corner would be about right here. My initials are LHP and today's date is 12-8-2016. Okay. 
Okay. Um, then it says to edit the chart titles on each of the following charts as follows. So the column chart, we're going to rename this one. annual sales and our axis title is going to be thousands okay for the line chart this chart title is going to be annual sales parentheses thousands um, for the stacked bar chart, chart title is annual sales. For the clustered chart, also annual sales. Okay, it says if you have difficulty viewing the text as you type a new chart, title or access title, select the text box containing the title and then click the formula bar just to the right of the FX button to type the new text and press enter. It says to save your workbook, pause and leave it open for the next exercise. Next we're going to be formatting a data series and it tells us to click on the 2014 pie chart and we're going to click in the largest slice of the pie, which is the espresso. So I want to make sure that I can tell that only this slice is selected. So I want to double click. And we're going to go to... Um, on the format tab, click on shape fill and we're going to choose dark red. So the coffee and espresso pie slice changes to dark red. It says to click the column chart and click the tallest bar, the coffee um, bar, and we're going to change that color to dark red also. Okay, and <clears throat> notice that the five bars have data selectors, these little dots, and um, that means that only those are selected. We're going to click on Shape Effects, and we're going to choose Bevel. Okay, and it says to click the first bevel option, the circle. Um, repeat this option for each of the data series. So I'm going to choose the um, orange one, change that to bevel. The gray one, change that one to bevel. So on and so forth. Change all those. Okay says in addition to shape fill it's shape outline and shape effects you can also change the elements with the shape styles dialog box launcher <clears throat> which is over here um, it says select any data series in the column chart if necessary and on the format tab we're going to click the Shapes Styles Launcher box. Um, the Format Data Series pane opens with the series of option um, buttons selected. It says click each of the three buttons under the Series Option label and look at the choices. So we have Fill, we have Shadow, and we have Series Options. says um,
to uh, click one of the coffee accessories columns and then we're going to click the fill and line option <laughs> Okay, and then we're going to click fill, and we're going to select picture or texture fill, and then we're going to click um, the texture drop down arrow, which is right here, and we're going to choose brown marble. Okay, and then it says to, so you coffee should now be this brown marble. We're going to save the workbook, pause and leave the next, leave it open. <clears throat> Changing the charts border line is next. So we're going to choose the line chart and we're going to choose the format tab up here at the top. In the current selection group, which is over here, we're going to click the arrow and the chart elements um, box and we're going to choose chart area and then we're going to click the more arrow in the shape styles gallery and we're going to choose um, colored outline blue see our colored outline blue accent one okay so we are looking for colored out, oh, geez, it's up, up at the top. Colored outline blue accent one, which is right here. Okay, you might not notice a change because of the thin line width. In the format tab, or in the format chart area pane, click the border area. So right here, or border arrow to expand the section and then click the width up arrow until you get to 2.5 okay so you should be able to see like a darker blue line um, then it says to click coffee and espresso line which would be the blue one okay and then in the color drop down arrow we're going to choose dark red. Okay, and then it says to save your workbook. And we're going to um, change the charts borderline next. So we're using the same document. It says to click the line chart tab and then choose the format tab. And in the current selection group, we're going to choose arrow. Oh, sorry, we're going to click the arrow and then we're going to choose chart area. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Pause, we already did that. Let's go on down here. We're on page 231, modifying a chart's legend. Sorry. Okay, click the line chart tab and then on the format tab. We're going to click the chart elements drop down arrow and we're going to choose the legend. Alright. It says um, if the format legend pane does not appear, click the format selection button. So it should say format legend over here. Alrighty, and we're going to in the legend position select um,
click the right to move the legend to the right side of the chart. Where is Legends? Ah, okay. Change it to this uh, Legend Options. And, okay, we're going to click on Right. To move the Legend to the right side of the chart. It says to click the Coffee and Espresso label right here twice um, and we're gonna go to text options right here to display the menus for the text in the fill color drop down choose red oh whoops hold on here I need to be on coffee and espresso text options under um, the fill color drop down arrow we're going to choose dark red and then we're going to click on the chart 2014 pie chart and we're going to click the coffee and espresso label twice um, so that only this one has the selection options. Go to the text options. And underneath text fill, we're going to choose dark red. Then it says to close the format data label pane. Alright, close. And we're going to um, save the workbook. It says to pause and leave the workbook open for the next exercise. Um, next, we're going to click the stacked bar chart. And it says, if necessary, click the white space of the chart to select the chart and make the buttons in the upper right corner appear. You know what? I need to move this just a little bit. We're going to click the white. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to click the um, chart elements button right here, and um, a menu appears showing which elements are currently on the chart and which are not. We're going to click the axis titles box to check it and add both a vertical and horizontal axis pane. Okay, so we have a vertical and a horizontal. It says to um, the axis title on the bottom of the screen has selection indicators to indicate it is selected. Click, click the formula bar and type thousands and then press enter. And then um, uh, all right, we're going to click on the total line chart tab next, and we're going to click chart elements again, this time adding axis titles. And this time the vertical axis is selected and you can click any placeholder to select it if it is already on a chart. Click in the formula bar and type thousands and then press enter. It says to repeat the previous step to add a vertical axis title of thousands to the coffee line chart.
Okay. And the horizontal axis title for the clustered bar chart. All right. Um, it says to click the stacked bar chart tab and click the chart elements button and then select data labels. Labels appear for each of the bars on the chart and then it says to save your workbook. Pause and leave the workbook open for the next exercise. Next we're going to be deleting elements from a chart. So it says that on the stacked bar chart sheet tab, we're going to click the axis title, the vertical axis title, and then we're going to press delete. So you can press delete on your keyboard for that. It says repeat step one to delete the following generic axis title labels on the charts. So we're going to go to the coffee line and we're going to delete the horizontal label. Go to total line and we're going to delete the horizontal. And on the clustered bar chart, we're going to delete the vertical label. It says to right click the stacked bar chart tab and we're going to click the move or copy selection. In the before sheet list box we're going to click on clustered bar and we're going to click on create a copy checkbox then click OK. Okay, stack, double click the stacked bar 2 label and we're going to type um, sales increase for the new name. Okay, so it says to double click the 150 data label for the bakery in 2018. That would be right here. All data labels for bakery have been have selection indicators. We're going to press the delete. Um, press delete button. Repeat step five for coffee accessories. So that would be the gray. We're going to delete. Um, But we need to do packaged tea, so that would be the yellow. And the deli labels. Click the annual sales title. And we're going to um, click in the formula bar. And then type coffee, comma, espresso, comma, and accessories only consistent sales increase and press enter. <clears throat> okay, you can also hide data series, so we're going to click the chart filters button on the right side of the chart, and we're going to click um, bakery to uncheck it. It says to repeat step 8 for packaged tea. 
packaged coffee and tea and the deli. And then click apply. After looking at the chart, you might decide it is better to keep all of the data series. So repeat step 8 and 9 to recheck the bakery, packaged coffee, tea, and deli series and reapply. So we'll recheck them and click apply. And then it says to save the workbook and then we're going to use this again. Next we're going to add an additional data series. So we're going to right click on sales. So I got to find my sales sheet. Right click on it and we're going to click move and copy and we're going to scroll to the bottom of the sheet and click on in the before list and we're going to select move to end and create click create a copy and then click OK. Double click the sales to and we're going to type sales expense and then press enter. <clears throat> On the sales expense sheet we're going to select cell A2 through F7 and we're going to click the insert tab and click the insert column and bar chart. We're going to choose 2D clustered column option Mm. Control Z. I selected too much. There we go. Select that and then go to insert custom call. So we only want A2 through F7 to be selected. Okay, so your clustered column should look like this and we're going to um, insert rows below coffee and espresso and packaged coffee tea. So to edit, edit the labels and values as shown in figure 12-16. So um, we are going to insert a row below coffee and espresso. So I'm going to go to the home tab and I'm going to click insert rows, Ooh, let's undo that, let's click on bakery, insert sheet rows, yellow coffee, and packaged, so I'm going to click on deli, insert sheet row there, and I'm going to add in, so we're going to edit this one to get rid of espresso, Okay, and we might want to make our book just a little bit bigger here so we can see see these figures better. So it should say coffee. Okay, and then we're going to change the numbers to 697. Tab. Here, let's highlight this. Tab. Tab. 740. Tab. 605, 440, and 575, tab. So we're going to type espresso slash premi, premium coffees, tab 105, tab 210, Tab 410, tab 610, tab and 810. Alright, so bakery um, stays pretty much the same. Coffee accessories stays the same. Okay, and then we have um, packaged. Coffee, 
All right, 176, 165, 150, um, 98, and 38. And then um, packaged T, 15, 25, 45, 100, and 150. Whoops. All right. And then the deli, pretty much, it looks like it stayed the same as well. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to right click in a blank area of the chart, and we're going to choose Select Data. The Select Data Source dialog box opens, and we're going to choose Add, and um, click the Add button, and in the Series Name box, click cell A4, and in the Series Value box, um, we're going to... Delete the entry that's there, and we're going to select cells B4 through F4, and then click OK, and we're going to click the uh, Move Up arrow button multiple times to move up to the Espresso, move the Espresso Premiums uh, below coffee, so about to there, so just move that down, so if I had a, the move down, I could just move it back up, okay. Um, and then it says to repeat steps 5 through and 6 with package T in 8A and the data in B8 through F8. All right, so we're going to click Add, and in the series name, we're going to add Package T, and we're going to delete the series, and we're going to select the range here, and click OK, and then we want Package T to be above Delhi, so I'm just going to click once. Okay, and then click OK to accept the changes and return to the worksheet. Okay, so now you can see we added the package T and the um, espresso. Okay, it says to save the workbook. All right, now we're gonna leave it open to use in the next exercise. So um, this says on the sales expense sheet, Move the mouse pointer to the white space um, to the left of the chart title. That would be over here. And the mouse is a four black four-headed arrow. It says to drag the chart to the left edge of the sheet um, and below row 11. So about right there. It says to move the mouse pointer to the lower right corner of the chart, right here, and the mouse pointer changes to a two-headed diagonal arrow. Drag the mouse pointer so that the lower right corner of the chart is in H28. So H28 is about right there. All right, um, the chart expands to make, take up more of the screen and you can see the columns and legend easier. It says to click the chart title and we're going to type um, detailed annual sales and then click a blank chart area. And point to the right center size handle 
should be right here. Okay, and then it just says to save. Pause and leave the workbook open to use in the next exercise. Next, we're going to choose a different chart type. So it says, get ready, use the workbook from the previous exercise. The sales expense sheet should um, be visible and the chart should be selected. It says to click on the design tab and then we're going to click the change chart type button. Okay, this dialog box opens. And we're going to click each of the chart types on the left. So click on all these to kind of see how the, how it will look. It kind of gives you a preview. And um, we're going to choose the <clears throat> click on the column button and then we're going to choose the stacked column. Okay, the second icon, and we're going to click OK. It says to click the Move Chart button, and we're going to click on New Sheet, and we're going to name it Detailed Sales. Click OK, and then it says to copy the Detail Sales Chart Sheet before the Sales Expense Sheet and name the the tab debt sales s <laughs> so we're gonna um, we're gonna click on move or copy right click on the sheet okay and we're going to create um, click Move it before sales expense. And we're going to create a copy. Click OK. Oh, we need to move it there. Okay. And then rename it. DET sales ES. Okay, um, on the design tab, we're going to use the change chart type button and we're going to change the chart back to a clustered column. And we're going to click OK. says to click one of the espresso premium coffee bars which would be the green and then on the design tab click the change chart type button and then the change chart chart type dialog box opens to a combo chart type um, in the espresso premium coffees chart type, we're going to select line. Okay. Um, and then it says to click OK. And we're going to edit the chart title to say, wow. Look at espresso slash premium coffee sales. Okay, and then we're going to click the format tab and in the insert shapes dialog box, we're going to click the arrow button and we're going to drag the arrow from the chart title to the espresso line. Kind of like that. 
All right, and then we're going to um, use the shapes outline button to change the arrow to red. Oh, here we go. Change it to red and with a three-point width. Okay, and we're going to save the workbook and leave the workbook open for the next exercise.